Glaciers, Deserts, and Wind, Chapter 6. Glaciers are part of two basic cycles in the Earth system. They are part of both the hydrologic cycle and the rock cycle. Gla a glacier is a thick mass of ice that formed over land in the compaction and recrystallization of snow and shows evidence of past or present flow. Okay. Types of glaciers are valley or alpine glaciers for mountainous areas, and then ice sheets or continental glaciers are very large scale and they cover areas such as like Greenland and Antarctica. And the other types of glaciers we find are ice caps and Piedmont glaciers. It's a diagram showing a glacier, continental glacier over Greenland, another continental glacier over Antarctica. Now how glaciers move? There are two types of movement. There's plastic flow, where the, um, the um, glacier moves in a very slow, viscous movement or slipping along the ground, pressure builds up and then it'll slip for a little bit and then pressure will build up and it'll slip again. Now part of the glacier is called the zone of fracture. That's the uppermost 50 meters, the top 50 meters of the ice, as that ice isn't under a lot of pressure, so it's still very brittle. And as, as the glacier moves, crevasses form or, or breaks form in the brittle ice. The zone of accumulation is the area where the glacier forms and the zone of wastage is the area where the net loss is due to melting. Okay, so here's our glacial budget diagram here. So first of all, this glacier is moving, is slowly moving in this direction. This top, slightly darker layer, that is that zone of fracture, okay, where crevasses might form. Okay. Now this, now this whole region, it snows in the winter, but where more snow falls, then it can melt away is the zone of accumulation and here's that snow line and down here is the zone of wastage okay so where all the snow from the previous winter has melted along with possibly some of the glacial ice okay and you'll notice that these are alpine glaciers so here's a large one here's two others and they kind of merge okay and these other features we're going to talk about in a few minutes okay Okay, so glaciers, they erode the rock surface by plucking. They lift up blocks of rock from underneath them. Or they also will abrade or scour the rock below and pulverize that rock into rock flour or carve grooves or styrations into the bedrock. Now landforms they form, well they erode out valleys to form glacial troughs or U-shaped valleys. They may, one glacier might cut off another glacier and leaving behind a hanging valley, so it's a U-shaped valley that's just cut off, all of a sudden drops away. Uh, cirques are round areas where glaciers start and carve out a bowl. Ariettes are points uh, that are left behind where ridges meet. And um, actually, ariettes, you know, let's see the diagram here. Yeah, ariettes are ridges that form between two glaciers. Okay. And a horn is a peak formed where a couple of ridges meet. And a tarn is a lake that's, that's in a, that's in a, in a uh, cirque. Okay. And here's some cirques, these round bowls carved by the glaciers where they start. And Paternoster lakes or chains of lakes are within the glacial valley. See, this glacial trough was deeper than these valleys. So they cut off these valleys causing hanging valleys. And they may end, this might be a what this is here probably a waterfall at the end of these hanging valleys. Here's a picture of a hanging valley. So you see the U-shaped valley. It was cut by a deeper glacial trough cutting across here. And here this, this stream is ending in a, in a massive waterfall. Okay. Here's the Matterhorn Swiss, Swiss Alps. So this is a horn, um, horn by the by multiple ridges, the arc, or the intersection of multiple ridges left behind by glaciers. Now the deposits that glaciers form, they, they will actually, since they're picking up rock and pulverizing rock, they're also going to be depositing rock and, and sediment. And so we call this deposit glacial drift. And that's all sediments of glacial origin are called glacial drift. Now there are types of glacial drift. There's till, which is the materials deposited directly by the ice, and it's not going to be sorted. It's going to be all kinds of sizes, all, all, uh, all put together, all mixed up together. Stratified drift, that's sediment deposited by the meltwater, and it's, stra it's sorted by size based on the speed that the meltwater is flowing. Glacial till is typically unstratified and unsorted. So here 
and this glacial till area here, you'll see that there's cobbles and then there's also smaller and bigger pieces. And these cobble, on the larger pieces, you actually can see grooves and, and places where, where these rocks were scratched. Now I'm bumping against other rocks while moving along with the ice. Other deposits, now actual features form from these deposits. Moraines are layers or ridges of till. And the types of moraines, we'll have lateral, medial, end, and ground moraines. Okay. And then the positional features, we'll also have outwash plains or valley trains, kettles, drumlins, eskers, and canes. So here in this diagram, here we have a glacier that's, that's retreating. It's losing ice faster than, than it's gaining ice. Okay. And here is, this is a uh, ground moraine. This is a, the um, rain sediments deposited by the ice. Now this edge of this glacier used to be here and another time was actually out here. So this here is an end moraine. That's till it's being deposited by the at the end of a moraine. Like right now it's probably depositing as it's receding. It's depositing rock forming another end moraine. That's how you kind of tell a bit history about the length of that glacier. An esker, there's a little stream underneath the ice depositing, they're making deposits in its little channel. Drumlins are, are these hills, they're kind of um, teardrop shaped hills of, of glacial till that's deposited the ice. The outwash plain, um, it's where, where um, there's also more sediment that's being washed over land flow from the melting ice on top of the, uh, possibly on top of the ground moraine. Let's see, kettle lakes are left when chunks of ice, blocks of ice melt, melt away, um, leaving, leaving um, basins that collect with, with water. Okay. Now, glaciers of the past. Now, during the Ice Age, began two to three million years ago, uh, in the division of geologic time, they're called the Pleistocene Epoch. The ice covered 30% of Earth's land area. So look, the, the, the Ice Age, there's ice. The third of the Earth. They go quite, quite um, deep into the United States. The bluer ice here is the sea ice to cover the ocean, and the white ice is glacial ice. Indirect effects of the Ice Age glaciers were, well, migration of animals and plants, um, rebounding upward of the crust. Well, while the ice was on the surface of the Earth, it pushed down the crust. It was very heavy. Um, so as the ice melted away, the crust has rebounded, so there's uplift of rock. Uh, worldwide change of sea level. Okay. More glacial ice, that's more water is in the ice, so sea level is, is lower. As the ice melts, the sea level rises. And there's also climate changes by all that ice in, in, the, in the system. Causes of glaciation. Successful theories must account for cooling of the earth as well as short-term climate changes. Proposed possible causes, well, plate tectonics, continents were arranged differently, and changes in ocean circulation. Uh, also other possibles are variations in Earth's orbit. The Milakovic hypothesis says the shape or eccentricity of Earth's orbit, okay, slightly eccentricity, kind of off from, it's not a perfect circle, it's an oval. The angle of Earth's axis, it's obliquity, obliquity changes, and the axis tends to wobble with precision. Changes in climate over the past several hundred thousand years are closely associated with variations in Earth's orbit. Okay. Now, um, now we're going to switch to deserts. Geologic processes in arid climates include weathering, which is not as effective as in humid, re humid regions because of the lack of moisture. Mechanical weathering forms unaltered rock and mineral fragments, and then there's chemical weathering that can occur in, in deserts, including the formation of clay and thin soils. The role of water in arid climate, streams are dry most of the time. Desert streams are said to be ephemeral. They flow only during periods of rainfall. And there are different names are used for desert streams called Wash, Arroyo, Wadi, Nonga, and Nala. Uh, Desert rainfall occurs as heavy showers and can cause flash floods. Okay, there's very poorly integrated drainage because there isn't frequent rainfall, it's very infrequent, so the drainage doesn't get developed very well. And most erosional work in a desert is done by running water. So here is a dry stream channel in the desert. So here's our, our stream channel. 
is the very same stream, stream channel flowing um, after a very heavy rainfall. Okay, the basin and range region out in western United States um, is an area that has a very desert landscape with mountains and valleys with uplifted crustal blocks. And between these, these blocks were these uh, interior drain, um, valleys with interior drainage that drains into the basins that produce alluvial fans to kind of like land-bound deltas and bajadas, playas, and playa lakes. Erosion of the mountain mass causes local relief relief, so the elevation difference, to slowly be reduced till the land gets flattened. Eventually, mountains are reduced to a few large bedrock knobs called inselbergs projecting above the sediment-filled basin. Okay, so here we have these uplifted rocks, okay, and so we have these ridges of mountains, and in between them we have these valleys, and the water all drains into these valleys as it um, drain, drains down. Uh, leaves deposits of alluvial material. Okay, so these are like loose rocks, and there's playa lakes. Okay, and over time, after um, these these the mountains are being worn down quite a bit, the alluvial fans start to merge together and form bajadas. Okay, and these playas are full of like evaporative minerals and and such as this water evaporates. Okay. And once the mountains are pretty much worn away, they'll leave little isolated knobs of, of rock that we'll call inselbergs. Okay. Now, wind erosion. Wind is pretty powerful in the, in the in arid regions. Wind erosion causes deflation. It's the lifting of loose material and it produces blowouts in desert pavement. Another thing is there's, when wind blows, sometimes sand's picked up and it can abrade uh, rock, Okay, also causing erosion. So here's, uh, here's deflation. So we have a desert landscape with sand and, and cobbles, okay, and a wind, strong wind comes by and picks up the loose sand or even smaller materials than sand and slowly as the sand gets blown away the cobbles just kind of stay in place, okay. So as, and, and the surface area keeps, keeps kind of subsiding in a sense. Okay, so eventually all that loose material is blown away and all those cobbles form a, a, form a nice uh, cohesive layer. Okay, now as the wind's blowing sediment through here, it actually starts depositing sediment that kind of sinks through and goes underneath those cobbles, raising up this layer that's kind of like, kind of like a road or, or a sidewalk, okay, it's called desert pavement. Liss, or loss, is is deposits of wind-blown silt, you know, silt or particles are smaller than sand size, and they cause extensive blankets of deposits. Primary sources are deserts and glacial stratified um, drift. Okay, now these now the deposits that wind, where wind deposits sediment or sands and silts, it forms sand dunes, which are mounds and ridges of sand formed from the wind's bed load. Okay, just like a stream has has a load of material of sediments that flows in the water. Well, what the wind can carry is its bed load. Okay. Now, the characteristic features of, of uh, sand dunes are a slip face. It's a leeward slope of the dune. And cross beds are sloping layers of sand in the dune. So as the wind's blowing sediment, it's dropping sand and it's pushing sand. Okay. And the slip, so the wind is going in this direction. The leeward side is facing into the wind, so you have your slip face. Okay, so it's flowing and dropping sand at the front edge, flowing, dropping sand at the front edge, causing these, these beds to end up becoming cross beds. Okay, as the wind changes direction seasonally or, or, or some of the things change to the climate, so the winds have changed, and then it starts, starts um, dropping sand in the other direction. Okay, so you get this nice cross bedding pattern form. And here's, here's some cross bedding out in the desert. Okay, types of sand dunes, Barkin dunes, transverse dunes, longitudinal, du longitudinal dunes, parabolic dunes, and star dunes. Okay, so a Barkin dune, we have wind going this direction. So we have these parabolic shapes with uh, steep slope faces on the inside. Okay, and these form, there's plenty of sand. Uh, transverse dunes form these, these uh, slope faces perpendicular to the direction of wind. 
barkanoid or scalloped, like transverse um, dunes, but they're scalloped. Okay, a star dunes form when wind. There's no particular prevalent direction of wind; it just flows in different directions at different times. Form these intricate star dunes. Parabolic dunes form along the coast, and they actually um, the slip face is on the rounded end rather than on the inside. So it's kind of like the opposite of the Barkin dunes. And then longitudinal um, dunes form parallel to the direction of, of the main wind. Okay, so those Barkin dunes are crescent shaped, tips point downwards. That's ha those happen when sand supplies are limited, and the surface is relatively flat and lacking vegetation. Those transverse dunes, there's plenty of sand, steady prevailing winds, and they form a series of long ridges. Longitudinal dunes are long ridges of sand parallel to the prevailing wind with a moderate supply of sand. Parabolic dunes, vegetation partially covers the sand, looks like barkins but tips point into the wind, along the coast with strong winds and abundant sand. Star dunes are isolated hills of sand with a complex form. Base of star dunes, star dunes replay, or resemble multi-pointed stars. Three or four sharp-crested ridges diverge from a central point. Those form where there's variable wind